This here, as I'm sure you all know, is the Mad Hatter from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Out of any character from this story, he seems to be the most popular. I mean, walk into your local Target or Hot Topic and I can guarantee that you're going to find quite a bit of merchandise with his eccentric face plastered all over it. But why is that, exactly? Perhaps it's because of his incredible amount of character depth. No, that's not it. Maybe it's how relatable his character is. Well, okay, on second thought. I guess it's probably because of his extremely eccentric and sometimes bordering on the psychotic appearance. He shakes. He's extremely forgetful. He's often saying nonsensical and seemingly completely under unrelated things like, why is a raven like a writing desk? He has sudden outbursts of anger and, worst of all, a complete and utter lack of self-control. What exactly caused the Mad Hatter end up like this? It is a possibility that he was just, you know, born this way, but it's far more likely that he had some kind of illness. But what does he have? There are several theories, but the one with the most credibility is the notion that the Mad Hatter contracted mercury poisoning due to the nature of his profession. You see, back in the day, hat makers, or hatters, would use heated mercury to expand the felt, the felt they used to create hats. Many hatters would absorb copious amounts of mercury just by just working with the fabrics after it's been treated. Of course, this isn't the only way mercury can be absorbed into the system. Most fish, especially tuna, shrimp, or sushi, can contain trace amounts of mercury that, when ingested alone, is perfectly harmless, but when ingested en masse can create some serious problems. Thermometers, fluorescent lights, all contain mercury. Mercury poisoning symptoms show up in several levels of the human body, but today we'd like to simply focus on the psychological and neurological effects of prolonged mercury exposure. The psychological and neurological symptoms can include sudden anger, short term memory loss, lowered self-esteem, inability to sleep, loss of self-control, excessive exhaustion, insomnia, and inability to learn new things, headaches, vertigo, shaking, loss of the peripheral vision, slurring speech, tinnitus, blindness, loss of coordination, and in rare case, a patient suffering from mercury poison may even lapse into coma. This may seem like a lot, but like I said earlier, there's still tons of physical side effects to take into consideration. When brain cells are exposed to mercury, the structure of the cell active actually begins to alter. We un to understand how mercury causes brain degeneration, we must understand how the neurons are structured. Each neuron is developed with a growth cone to aid in the structural creation. Two pro proteins in these growth cones are actin and tubulin, which provides the structural and neurite membrane. During regular non-exposed cell growth, tubulin sticks together end-to-end -to, -end to form microtubules around, neural fiber, around the neural fibrils. Once mercury has been introduced into the system, the mercury molecules attach themselves to, tubu to the tubulin, in the spot that's reserved for GTP, which would normally be what provides the energy to stick together. This causes tubulin cells to be unable to connect to one another, which in turn causes the entire cell to be built without tubulin, and a lack of tubulin can cause each brain cell to collapse under its own weight, leaving tangles of denuded neural fibers. Curing mercury poisoning is simple. Suction to the lungs to get any excess mercury out, The fluids then fluids are intravenously administered, followed by the long-term treatment. But none of these can be done unless it can be unless it can be identified. The non-neurological symptoms of mercury poisoning can be every bit as bad as the psychological ones, but with one major twist: most physical symptoms, once treated, when treatment is administered, will be cured pretty easily. That's the difference with psych most psychological symptoms. Once the brain has been damaged by mercury, or really anything for that matter, the symptoms will probably persist until death. All in all, mercury poisoning will almost destroy the brain. There's even a theory that mercury poisoning can cause autism in small children. If you take anything away from this, let it to be to avoid mercury at all costs, and also to be careful when cleaning up broken fluorescent light bulbs.